and <laughs> welcome to the Sportscast, April 13th, 2018. Big week in sports, big weekend in sports. The NBA season, uh, regular season, concluded on Wednesday. A lot of hype, a lot of seeding to be figured out, and um, and uh, a couple teams that made it in last minute. And and we got Ty Turner to discuss it. Hey, Ty, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man. So you're not a Minnesota fan, but they got into the playoffs on Wednesday by beating the Nuggets overtime. Actually, I wouldn't say I'm not a Minnesota fan. I um probably not as much as I used to be, but I'll, I'll, I'll I'm st- I would still consider myself. Kind of a Minnesota fan. I like Minnesota Timberwolves better than I like any other Minnesota sports team, honestly. So, yeah, it was, it was nice to see. It's been 13 years since um, they've been in the playoffs, and they got in by the skin of their necks in overtime. Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty eventful game. I actually went to the game. I was in Denver the week before, and I actually went to the Nuggets Timberwolves game the week before. Wow. And the Nuggets won. Won at the end of regulation, and then they came back, played uh, for the final game of the season, and the winner made the playoffs. Well, the loser went home, and in overtime, the Timberwolves made it. So, uh, man, barely making it, but hey, make, they made it in. So, yeah, a extra five minutes was added to determine the last spot. But you know, someone was telling me they weren't competing for an eighth spot because they could have been as a. Uh, Another spot, like in the, the seven seed or something, but it turned out to be the eighth spot. Um, anyways, I am going to read the playoff games. And okay. um, the first one is Toronto, Washington, Cleveland, Indiana, Philadelphia, Miami, uh, the Celtics, Milwaukee, Houston, Minnesota, OKC, Utah, Portland, New Orleans, Pelicans, and Golden State versus San Antonio. Let's start with the first one, Toronto Washington. How do you see that matchup? Uh, um, I'll definitely say I have more knowledge of the Western Conference in the Eastern, but I'm going to give it a go on the East. Um, I'm going to take Toronto. I think uh, they had the second best record in the NBA, and they, they, I mean, Dwayne Casey is a pretty good coach. Um, he has you know some good start, good players, and Demar Derozan and Kyle Lowry. I think he has some good guys off the bench. Um, I, like once again, I'm not as knowledgeable about the Eastern Conference, but um, I know that Washington's kind of had an up and down year. John Wall's been injured a lot. Um, I think Bradley Beal's playing pretty well. So they have some good players. We got we need time. We got Beal and Wall. You have two of the better guards in the league. Um, so it's it's possible, but I think I'm gonna go Toronto in that one in and- about six games. <laughs> Okay, so Toronto in six games. Um, I have Toronto winning in five. I don't think it'll be a sweep. It might be five or a sweep. So it should be a good. It should be an easy first round. Nothing to really think about that one. Uh, next one is. Uh, what was that? I said okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we could be rapid fire on the East if you want. I mean, I don't, you don't have to go in depth. <laughs> But you seem to know a lot about Washington, so you didn't have problems with that one. <laughs> uh, Cleveland, Indiana, the Midwest Derby. Well, you skipped Boston and uh, – oh, wait. Are we going Are we going one and then four or five? Is that how we're doing it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're doing it like uh, all in order. So, Okay. So, Cleveland versus Indiana. You know, Indiana's a pretty good team. Um um, I mean, Cleveland has LeBron James. He's definitely the best player on the court at all times. Um, but Indiana is a pretty good team. They've had a very good year. They have a good coach named McMillan. Um, I, I'm going to go Cleveland in six, but I think it's going to be more problematic. I, I don't think LeBron has barely lost a game in the first round of playoffs. Has he lost a game in the first round of the playoffs? For several years, I think I heard some stat that it's been like seven years in a row and he's not lost a first round game. That is something correct. crazy like that. Yeah, I mean he has no That's issue with the first round. But this Indiana team is is pretty good. I mean, uh, 
Uh, let me let me check it. Quick, quick, yeah, quick they have uh, they have Victor Aladipo. They got Lance Stevenson. Uh, they got Sabonis, Miles Turner, Bojan Bogdanovic, Trevor I mean, Booker. Yeah, I mean uh, Victor Aladipo. Uh, Aladipo. It's hard to say his name. I think might be the um, uh, most improved player in the NBA. I mean, he was an All Star this year. He's he's a terrific guy. He can. And not not only shoot the ball, but he's a, one of the best defenders from the guard position. He probably can be a first or second team All NBA defender. And then you got Darren Collison and uh, Miles Turner at center. It's, I mean, that's the bonus who who can shoot the ball for a big man. Glenn Robinson. They have Al Jefferson. Guy. Yeah, Al Jefferson. who's not what he used to be, but he's still a, a solid player. Um, but at the same time, it's I, I, I'm not going to go against LeBron James. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say Cleveland in six, Cleveland in six. I say Cleveland in five or six. It won't be a sweep. Um, I was, you know, telling Ryan this earlier this week that I, like, I was thinking Lane Stevenson is the face of the Pacers, but he told me, no, no, no. he's just a veteran, you know, veteran leadership type of guy, but like, he won't really, he'll just defend against LeBron. That's pretty much what's his, um, hype. About he, he's not even a, he, he, he doesn't even start for the Pacers. I don't believe. Okay, well there you go. I I I, yeah. I, I overhyped him. I think <laughs> he was good back, good, but like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was very good. Um, but he's still in his twenties, so hopefully, maybe he'll come back and and maybe blow uh, LeBron a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Philadelphia, Miami. ESPN said this is could be the most physical series of the bracket? Um, well, Philadelphia is just rolling. They've won 16 games in a row. And they have the rookie of the year in Ben Simmons. They have Joel Embiid, who is who is probably the best center in the league right now. Like, true center. I mean, you got Anthony, it's more like that. And you got Marcus Cousins when he's healthy. But um, I'd say... Embiid and he's it can shoot and he's to defend. He can do it all, and it's um, go along with him. Markel Fultz is playing pretty good. He got a triple double in his last game, um, so he's come back looking not too bad. But then Miami, you know, Eric Spoelstra is a pretty good coach. Um, he's proved that it, even since he lost all the big three, um, he's continued to keep Miami relevant with a pretty. With a roster, not really with any superstars. I mean, you got Goran Dragic, who was an all-star this year. And uh, you got guys like uh, uh, Hassan Whitehead, who's a good defensive big man. He just has a solid roster, solid coach, or a solid team. Philadelphia is super talented on top, but the thing is they are young. Um, one of the youngest teams in the league. So it is kind of a tricky series because, they're more experienced, Miami, and experience matters in the playoffs. But I'm going to go Philadelphia. So I'm going to go seven. Uh, I think uh, experience will give them problems, but I think they just the more talent. Um, I think I'm going to go with them in the end. I agree. I did pick Philadelphia, even though I'm a huge Miami Heat fan. I am going for Philadelphia. They got the the streak. They got the win and, uh, on their sails. Um, are you a JJ Redick fan? He's all right. I mean, he was good at he was good at Duke. He could shoot. Yeah, he's um he's brought some leadership to that team, but I definitely seventy sixers. I predicted the seventy sixers to be the dark horse of the whole play. I mean, of the Eastern Conference. Well, that's, it's possible, but remember, they are young. Yeah, their two best players are like uh, a rookie and like a. I mean, Embiid was injured for two years, but he's what? I think he's in his second year. Or yeah, right. He was yeah. rookie last year. Yeah, um, I mean, second year, so it's kind of confusing though because he was drafted several years ago, but he ended up being injured for a couple of years, so he only he was a rookie. I mean, he missed what one or two years. So, but he's he's a second year player, and Simmons is a rookie for all intents and purposes. It's getting kind of tricky though, by the way, because re- in recent years, a lot of guys have missed their rookie seasons. So then they're like a rookie in their second year after they were drafted. <laughs> That's really tricky. Like Blake Griffin that happened. To. Yeah, Blake Griffin it happened to. It happened to Joel Embiid, who's like in his third year after being drafted, but it was his rookie season. And now Ben Simmons. I know that they're kind of like 
think about not giving the rookie of the year award to a guy who that happens to anymore. I don't think it's going to pass though. But anyways, yeah, uh, to the subject. Uh, Joe and B young. will actually will be not healthy till the middle of the series. So, but Philadelphia is doing good with it, like without him. Yeah, yeah, and but the thing is, is um, he it's a he, he injured his orbital bone, I, I believe, correct? Yeah, correct. In yep. his face, mm-hmm. so he should be able. The thing is, is like if you like Stephen Curry, for instance, he uh, had a MCL tear. That is, you just don't know how healthy he's going to come back. He might only come back, and it might take him a while. He might never be completely healthy. Whereas Embiid, it's his face, which doesn't really. Affect your play, you know. what yeah. I'm saying it's not as an arm, a leg. Put so a I think when he does, mask. That, he'll be perfect, he'll be perfectly fine. He'll just have a mask on his face. <laughs> and uh, Celtics and Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a young team. People are predicting Milwaukee to win it. Well, I know why because um, the Celtics are missing their two best players, Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. So, um. I think Brad Stevens is one of the best coaches in basketball, and he does a lot with that roster. And they still got Jason Tatum. They got um, uh, the kid from California. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Jalen Brown. Um, they Marcus Smart is out too. So, um, and then and then with the box, you got Giannis. I can't even say his name. Giannis, Giannis the Greek freak. The Greek freak, one of the best players in basketball, um, the, definitely will be the best player in the court. Uh, Jabari Parker's back. I heard he's playing pretty good. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he was he was a first team All American out of Duke. Again, has had a lot of injury problems. Pretty much missed all his rookie season, then came back, and then ended up getting hurt again. Um, I, you know. And then they got Malcolm Brogdon, last year's Rookie of the Year. Chris Middleton, who's a 20-point-plus-per-game scorer. Don't forget Matthew Della oh. Devova. Yeah, does he do much with them? He doesn't do anything with them, though. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's, he's pretty much a meddling um, bench bar. Um, <laughs> and, and, yeah, so, and then Eric Bledsoe, who, who is a very, who's been uh, a, a starting guard in the league for several years. Um, man, I, I'm struggling on this one. Uh, Come on, Ty. This is easy. But this, I don't think it's easy. How's this easy? <laughs> Boston has, you know, two of their stars are not there. I mean, unless Brad Stevens' system really kicks in. <laughs> okay, okay. You're going to say that. Cool. <laughs> Who is their coach? Brad Who Stevens. Who is the Milwaukee <laughs> Who's the Milwaukee Bucks coach? Isn't he an interim coach? Yeah, okay. So they're having an interim coach going against Brad Stevens, a guy who led Butler, a mid-major, to two NCAA finals. Should have won the one over Duke. And then, since he's been at Boston, he took him from one of the, uh, from the, one of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference to playing for the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and with a roster that lost its best player in the opening game of the season, and Tyree Urban, who's missed uh, over almost half the season, he's taking them to the second seed, and this is an easy pick? No, I don't think it is. Ooh. I mean, you, sometimes you've got to look beyond, like, you have to look beyond the stars, and you have to look at, man, if the team is, for instance, I went to that Denver Nuggets versus Timberwolves game. That, if you look on paper, that shouldn't even be in a game. Like, the Timberwolves should have wiped the Nuggets off the map. You have Carl Anthony Towns, an all-star. You have Jimmy Butler. He actually wasn't playing the first game, but he played in the second game, an all-star. You have Jeff Teague, who's been an all-star. You have Andrew Wiggins, who's the former number one player picked in the draft. The Denver Nuggets didn't have one guy who's ever been an all-star. Well, okay, the Paul Melsap, but he's not, he, he's, he's, he's not an all-star anymore. And then a bunch of role players, but they played much better as a team. And they beat them in Denver, almost made the playoffs, took them to overtime in Minnesota. And this is a team, if you go star to star, um, Minnesota has 
four to five all stars to their one past his prime all star. So you sometimes got to look beyond the stars. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and when you go to the the Bucks roster, Giannis Antetokounmpo is a star. But the other guys, they're good. Chris Middleton's a good player. Malcolm Brogdon was a rookie in the year in a very poor uh, rookie class because Ben Simmons was out. Um, you can choose Boston Hawks, if you so, want. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know I'm gonna. I'm, I, you know what? Because they're they're. I know I'm going roundabout way. I'm going to do it. I'm just saying seven games. The better coach team's going to do it. You and the, you know I think yeah. He is, he is enough good players with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, to um, Greg Monroe, to to do it, you know. And and yeah, they're missing their best player in Kyrie Irving. They've been missing Gordon Hayward the whole year, so that's not even really applicable. If they would have had Kyrie Irving, they might have been a first seed. Oh yeah, they probably would have been a first. Seed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, I I I know you think you're you're like, oh, this is easy. But who do they have? It like they have the interim coach. Yeah, um, interim coach Joe Prunty. Um, so you're saying Boston in seven? Is that what you're uh, trying to say? Yeah. Okay, Boston in seven. Um, now to the West: Rockets versus the Minnesota T Wolves. Uh, I just I because I've watched you know from Minnesota and then I was at the the game last week, and then, uh, of course, watched the game the other night. Minnesota does not – I do not – as an, especially as an, as an offensive unit, are not good. They are not good. They uh, – I don't know how else to put it, but how many times, like, single pass, isolation, no ball movement, not setting any screens, and you literally – move out of the way and you like Teague either takes the ball, doesn't pass it at all and will do some wild eyed shot or try to drive in the lane or you throw out a single pass to Butler or single pass to Towns. Wiggins doesn't even seem to get the ball anymore. And I'm, the guy who actually I think is the best player, the only guy who set screens plays really, really good, tough, stingy defense is Todd Gibson. Um, I, I don't like it. I don't like them as a team. I haven't. I don't like how um, Tom Thibodeau has put this team together uh, as an offensive unit. I think they're deplorable. Um, they play pretty good defense, but there's also breakdowns on the defensive end. For a defensive coach, man, he has a lot of breakdowns on defense. Um, I really think he's an overrated coach. I think he needs to get rid of – he's the GM currently of the Timberwolves. I think he doesn't need to be the GM anymore because I don't think he's done that great a job. And he he just brings a bunch of his guys, quote-unquote, in, and a lot of them are, like, isolation players. And I, I, I'm, I don't love the Timberwolves. So, long story short, James Harden, CP3, they win this series in four. Go straight sweep. up with it. A sweep. A sweep. I say okay. Houston in five, not a sweep. Um, okay. Our next matchup, I think, is one of the biggest uh, matchups of the first round, OKC versus Utah. I love the Jazz. I love the Jazz. They get the Ricky Rubio, my boy. Always been a Rubio fan. Oh, man, they play good as a unit, too. Oh, they swing the ball so well. Quinn Snyder's one of the best coaches. I think he should be coach of the year. You got one of the best defensive, probably the defensive player of the year, and Ruby Gobert at the center position. You got the second place guy who normally would win rookie of the year in Donovan Mitchell. You got Joe Ingles, who does a little bit of everything, a swing forward. He can shoot. He can pass. I like them much better as a team. I'm going to go straight up on this. Five games, digging rid of Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City's not good. They have Russell Westbrook. Paul George has not had a good year. Carmelo Anthony, please retire. <laughs> Billy Donovan, go back go back to college. Yeah, I loved you as a college coach. I'm not liking you in the NBA. Russell Westbrook knows how to average a triple-double, but what has he done in the playoffs? He made... One NBA Finals when he had Kevin Durant. Other than that, 
He's very ineffective in the playoffs. This is easy. Jazz and five. Jazz and five. <laughs> I think Jazz and six or in five. Um, I do think Utah yeah. is the dark horse of this playoffs. Are a dark horse. I like your. I like your thinking, dude. I mean, they're gonna push. They're gonna push the Rockets. Uh, I mean, they're gonna challenge the Rockets by a lot I if agree. they face each other. I agree. Uh, next matchup: Portland versus the New Orleans Pelicans. There's two guys called Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, and they're pretty dang good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, Rip City in six. The best player on the court is Anthony Davis. I don't like the rest of the Thunder roster that much. But, uh, man, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. I watched him play against the Jazz the other night. They're good. Uh, man, D- Damian L- Lillard is one of the most cold blooded shooters, one of the best cold blooded shooters in the NBA. Uh, man, he can, he's just a terrific scorer. From anywhere in the court, driving, shooting, oh, and McCollum the same way. I love those two guys. Um, so yeah, Portland six. Portland six. I pick Portland in five or sweep. They say Anthony Davis will be a complete player in a year or two, but I don't think this is his time. Um, he missed the playoffs last year. I think the year before they made it to eighth. So New Orleans definitely developed oh. into a good team, uh, uh, to a solid contender. So. Next matchup, Golden State versus the San Antonio Spurs. Old rivalry. Banged up, uh, Golden State Warriors. Yeah, man. I tell you what. And then you got Co- um, yeah, can't talk. Coach Popovich, who's one of the best coaches in the history of the NBA, if not the best coach in the history of the NBA. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't love how Golden State's banged up. They're not playing good. I mean, they lost about 40 points to Utah the other night. But when I look at this San Antonio roster, if someone can get more out of left, it's going to be Coach Popovich. But I don't – I just don't see this roster being good enough to beat Golden State. I do think they're going to win a couple games. But, you know, no Kawhi Leonard. Uh, you got LaMarcus Aldridge. Then you got, you know, a bunch of role kind of guys with, like, Rudy Gay, Paul Gasol, Patty Mills, Manny Ginobili, uh, Danny Green. A, a bunch of solid role players. But then you're still dealing with Kevin Durant, who's one of the best players in the NBA. Um, he's not playing very well right now, but he, he still, still is Kevin Durant. And then you got uh, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, who have not been playing as well either, but they're still, I mean, these are all stars. And, uh, and you got Nick Young, you got uh, uh, Quinn Cook. Uh, Cook, who's playing pretty well, actually. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go six games, the Warriors. I just think they're better. Uh, you know, I just think they're more talented. But they're not playing very well. And San Antonio has Greg Popovich. And LaMarcus Aldridge is playing pretty well. And he is an all-star and he's a very good player. But uh, And I don't see anyone who can really guard him right currently on the Warriors roster very well. But uh, I think I'm going to go six games, Golden State. But they've won, what, two of the last three titles. The third one they lost in seven games in the NBA they almost won three in a row. So I have to go with the champ, but it makes me a little tougher because of Popovich. Yeah, I I I choose Golden State, but I would not be surprised an upset might happen. Um I was hearing if Golden State is struggling in the series that uh that Curry might come in. So we'll see. I didn't hear that. Yeah, he huh. If they're down like three two or they're down like two one, then they'll probably put him in. He's healthy enough. Not hundred percent, but you know they'll he'll probably limp in one leg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then once if Curry can come back and he's at least like eighty percent by the second round series, I think Golden State is is still gonna win the whole thing. 
Yeah. But it's p- completely predicated on him coming back and being, he has to be, you know, where you have to respect his shot and, you know, be pr- pretty much, he can't be like, like, <laughs> But he's out there, but he's not even close to 100%. I mean, then they, they I don't think they'd be Houston. And actually, I don't know if they'd be Utah or even Portland. But uh, if he can come back in 80%, I mean, I just, they still from top to bottom have, I mean, they have four all stars. They have two future Hall of Famers. So, you know, it's tough to beat. So, yeah. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be a, a, a interesting series. Uh, but like you were saying, you pick Golden State to win it. Um, who's your dark horse in the East? Um, hmm. Uh, well, I have Toronto winning. I have Boston winning. I have Philadelphia winning. I have Cleveland winning. So clearly I have the top four, <laughs> top four seeds winning. Um, and then it's such a tricky thing because you could consider the dark horse to be Boston because of all the injuries. So they'd probably be considered – because, I mean, you could say Philadelphia because they've just been porous the last several years, and then all of a sudden they're a third seed. But are they really a dark horse this year with the rookie of the year, one of the best big men in Joel Embiid, coming in on a 16-game win streak? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd call that a dark horse. You can't call Cleveland, who's won three straight um, Eastern Conference championships, a dark horse. So – who do I think is going to win the East? I'm going to go Cleveland. So, <laughs> I don't really have a dark horse. I think it's going to be Cleveland over, uh, um, I think they'd be Toronto in the se- in the second round. And then I think it's, they play, uh, I think I'm going to go Philadelphia, I guess. In Philadelphia versus Cleveland, I think Cleveland wins it. So... Yeah. And you say that the Golden State will go to to, to the NBA Finals. Who, who, who do you who do you think is the dark horse um, in the East? I consider Philadelphia as a dark horse. Um, uh, by far. Are they a dark? How are they a dark horse? I mean, looking at paper, I mean, last year they were nothing. This year they came out, you know, like they rose up to third, and then they could beat Boston or Milwaukee, and then for the East Final. They'll probably challenge either Toronto or Cleveland really well. Like they'll probably take them to seven games, maybe win the East. Now that would be a dark but horse. It, if they win the East, they'll win for sure. Be a dark horse. But how are they a dark horse? I, I, I mean, I understand that. Yeah, they've been recent decade. They've been horrible, but this year they're not. I mean, they and they have two of the best young players in the NBA. I, I just don't know how you're making a dark. point. I mean. I mean I would say you know Milwaukee probably more of a legitimate dark horse. Yeah, yeah. See, because I, 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 clearly it sounds like you have Milwaukee beating Boston. Yeah, I mean from what? Yeah, okay. So if, if Milwaukee all of a sudden then went at and upset Philadelphia, which is not out of the realm of possibility, they could be Boston because Boston has so many injuries. I, I mean, I, I am a little skeptical picking Boston because <laughs> you're missing your best players, and, and so they could beat them. And then Milwaukee could beat Philadelphia because Philadelphia is young. You know, when you're a young team, you you, you can do young things like lose to teams that are not as good. So Milwaukee, if I if I were going to go a dark horse, I don't think they get by Boston. But I could see them possibly get by Boston, and I could see them possibly getting by um, Philadelphia and all of a sudden beating in the NBA Finals. Sorry, in the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't know. There's no way that Milwaukee could make the NBA Finals. But if I actually was going to go for a dark horse, I'm not having them go past the first round. But it would be Milwaukee because of who they get in the first round and even in the second round against a Philadelphia team that is extremely young. So if I was going to go a dark horse, it would be Milwaukee, and that would be a dark horse because they're a seventh seed. They have an interim coach and – so that would be if I was going to go a dark horse. But I don't have a dark horse. I think Cleveland's going to make it to the finals. Yeah, uh, this is not a dark horse year. I mean, it could be, but it could be. You don't know. I mean, it is possible because because then you're probably going to ask me what my dark horse in the Western Conference is, right? Yeah, which you say was Utah, which I agree is Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean Utah yeah, could beat Houston. Too. 
Yeah. Actually, uh, man, I, I, yeah, yeah, I mean. They could. I mean, I it's a realm possibility. Yeah, I might. I, I'm I, I'm gonna see how they play in the first round series. They have to get by the first round series of Oklahoma City, but which is a great test for them. Possibly, I could possibly see them being in the Western Conference Finals against Golden State. <laughs> and to be- <laughs> maybe beating them? No, I don't. I, with Stephen Curry, there's no <laughs> Golden State loses, but yeah, don't know. I, I mean, don't know. It, it's here's tough. the thing because okay, I mean, this year is. Look, the injury, let's be honest. The injuries is just not all there. The teams are not all in. This is a good possibility where a team has a good chance to squeak into the finals. And I personally think that Houston is, 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 is I don't know if the word can even use, but is ra- radically, drastically, super uh, – Overrated. <laughs> I don't know the, uh, the well, I can't think of the word right now, but um, I think they're very overrated. I, I think Houston's overrated. Um, I, let, let's see how they do in the playoffs. Yeah, but I, you know what? James Harden has not always played very well in the playoffs. That's the thing. He's been, he's been a lot of times a guy who's played amazing during the regular season and the playoffs kind of disappeared. I mean, he just cleared last year in the playoffs completely against San Antonio. Um, and that was Kawhi Leonard. Was Kawhi Leonard even in that? I think Kawhi Leonard was hurt, too, wasn't he? he yeah. I know he was hurt again. Which he, he may not play at all this uh, this playoffs. Well, I don't think he will, no. Has he played this year at all, Kawhi Leonard? Uh, uh, at the beginning he did, but then towards the second half of the season he did it. He did play at the, at the beginning this year? Yeah. For how many games? I don't know. It. I mean, by the time All Star Game showed up, it was kind of like he kind of faded out. Oh, he played. Well, yeah, he played nine games this year, and his numbers were terrible. Wow. When? Well, what's his deal? What's up with Fly Leonard? No idea. It's a personnel issue. Um, he, I think uh, he got injured and he didn't like recover on time, and he wants to recover on his own. Uh, but it seems like there it will be a divorce happening uh, this summer. Most likely, is he going to ever be the Kawhi Leonard he was? Is I mean, I I have not looked into his situation very much. Is he, or did, is this a chronic injury, or what? What exactly is injured? Um, good question. I have no idea exactly what was his. Uh, let me see his injury. Let me look that up. Um, yeah, and it's I, I mean something to do with his. Let's see. Uh, um, his quadriceps, quadriceps tend to not uh pathy. He's dealing with so his quads. His quads. Okay. Yeah, so it's not a knee injury, it's not an ankle or anything, but it's not knee, ankle, or back, which those tend to be more chronic. That's a weird. But he's missed the whole year, and he was missing last year in the playoffs. All because of a quad. Well, last year in the playoffs, his ankle, I believe. Yeah, uh, he made it to the West Finals and had a good first game against Golden State. But then after that game, he got injured, and then uh, Golden State went on to win the series four-one. Uh, yeah, they almost won that game. I remember yeah. that. That was the closest game. That would have been a good series if Leonard was healthy throughout. Yeah, it, it, or yeah, it could have been. I, I mean, I was that last year's Golden State team was on point, but yeah, it could have been a good series. Yeah, yeah. I re- I really think that when it all comes down uh, that Golden State, if they can get Curry back on, I mean, this is a team that's won two of the last three. They had the best record in the NBA a couple years ago. They uh, just swiped through the playoffs last year, hardly losing a game. Um. I just see if if they have if Stephen Curry can come back and be eighty percent, and everyone else can play like they can, I d- don't see them losing. But it, it's been tough. They, they, the injuries really have hurt them this year, and when they've been missing one of their big players, especially Curry, Curry does make that team go. Oh yeah, I mean it's Curry. It's Curry's team. Which is the I, thing. I, really, I mean, Kevin Durant has to step it up uh, for this series to to just go 
their way, and he has to play that 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 OKC role he had a couple years ago, but he hasn't panned out during the regular season. So we'll see how it goes in the playoffs. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, they still are a second seed, still have a 50, 58 and twenty four record. So it's not like <laughs> it's still a very good season. But yeah, they've yeah. recently not looked very good. Yeah, I mean, we don't know like if they were sleeping towards the end of the season, but now they're going to wake up for the playoffs. But it's going to be that series is going to be interesting. I really, I'm, I'm going to look at it, but we'll see if the uh, veteran. The only thing that, um, that I see is it, like if Tony Parker steps it up. But man, he's old. Oh yeah, he's old. He's 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 so old. He doesn't even know how to play basketball. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but he he is seriously. I mean, look at it. What his stats were this year. Tony Parker. Yeah, he he doesn't even. He averages seven points a game now. Yeah, that's the this is a guy. Out. Three assists. I mean, he's he makes that bench super warm. No, I mean he still <laughs> comes in and contributes. But when I look at that that roster for San Antonio, my goodness, it's I mean, you have Marcus Aldridge, who's, who's an all-star, who's a terrific player, who averages 23 points a game. But when you go beyond that, it's just a bunch of role players. But if someone – if there's a couple people who can do it, like if you're going to ask me – okay, if I was going to ask you, who do you think the three best coaches in the NBA right now, who would you say? The three best coaches, Steve Kerr, uh, Pop, and uh, Brad Stevens. Steve Kerr? Yeah. Hasn't the really third, but yeah. I, I wouldn't say Steve Kerr. Um, sorry. Who would you say? Uh, if, I was, if I had to say, I'd say Brad, uh, Greg Popovich. I mean, of course, he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Brad Stevens. And it probably Quinn Snyder. Yeah, he's up there. He's my honorable mention. It'd be Quinn Snyder or, uh, you know, I like Terry Stott for Portland's good coach. And I also like uh, Dwayne Casey for Houston, I mean, for uh, Toronto. But yeah, Tony uh, doesn't make that list. <laughs> I know, because as much as he's had some success, if he has the right personnel for his offense, like, first of all, he has to have a terrific um, playing at the point guard position. He, he's had good teams. I mean, look what he did in. Phoenix with Steve Nash, and look what he's doing at Houston with uh, James Harden and Chris Paul. But um, if uh, he doesn't have that, his teams don't really go, like the debacle he had with the New York Knicks. But uh, and Steve, Steve Kerr, I don't, you know, how hard is it when you have four All Stars and two future Hall of Famers? Well, I mean. Before Steve Kerr, I mean, uh, Mark Jackson couldn't do it, but Steve Kerr could. But, but. but when Mark Jackson was there, Draymond Green wasn't an all-star. Was Draymond Green even playing for them yet? Oh, yeah. He was. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, they were younger, so maybe they peaked at the I mean, right I time. agree. Mark Jackson obviously got fired because he did not do – and Steve Kerr did, it did more, but then Curry got better – and then Clay Thompson got better. Draymond Green went from being a role player to being an All Star. Um, uh, you know, I, Steve Kerr also was the coach when they lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, Steve Kerr's done a good job. I mean, he's he's a solid coach. He knows how to play. But he's also inherited more talent than anyone else by far in the NBA. Yep. I, how like. It really tests a coaching medal is when you see someone like um, Brad Stevens do what he's done with the Boston Celtics with so many injuries, and there's still a second seed, and they still play very well as a team. I liked uh, Mike Malone, what he did with the Denver Nuggets, like I said, with really no all-stars, or you know, and or the job that um, Quinn Snyder does. Quinn Snyder had them as a fourth seed, fifth seed last year, made the second round of the playoffs. They lose their best player in Gordon Hayward, and everyone's like, oh, they're not going to make the playoffs. And he makes, and they're a fifth seed. 
playing extremely good basketball, and they didn't have one All Star. I mean, that's terrific. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, and then Greg Popovich is Greg Popovich. No matter if he, who he's had in there, he always wins. No matter who he, you know, injuries, he always wins. Let's see what Steve yep, Kerr would do yeah, goes, if you took uh, away Kevin Durant and Stephen oh. Curry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, um. You'd take it first. Line. Speaking about coaches, Frank Vogel got fired uh, yesterday, and uh, Jeff Hornacek from the Knicks got fired. Frank Vogel got fired from the from like the Magic, and Jeff Hornacek got fired by the Knicks. Thoughts? <laughs> oh, Hornacek! I think he's about ready to head out of the league. You know, he's had his couple ten years, and they both ended horribly. And uh, I didn't know much about the Magic this year or the last couple of years, but one thing I do know is I have heard very little about them, and they've been bottom dwellers sitting around that 20-win range. So I'm assuming that is a fireable offense. <laughs> yeah, that is. And the first person to go is the coach. If your team is not performing in, at so, their highest level for the past two seasons, you go and – Wait, I remember when Frank Vogel was, you know, called the coach of the future when he led the Pacers to the Eastern Conference Finals, when he had PG yep. and Lance. But unfortunately, you know, when you're uh, given a bad hand, is it's just tough to turn it around. And with Jeff Hornacek with the Knicks, um, that was Phil Jackson's guy. And obviously Phil got fired last summer, so the writing was on the wall unless Jeff, you know, had the Knicks go to the playoffs, but that did not happen. Man, the Knicks. When are, when are they going to be relevant again? <laughs> uh, hopefully, not as long as Minnesota. <laughs> I know, but and, and I'm really interested in the draft. There's some definitely some good talent coming in to see how who drafts who and and uh, yeah, yeah. And then of course we got the NFL draft coming up. Bro. Yeah, Rosen is a strong candidate for the Jets. <laughs> He's actually a decent candidate for the Giants. That too. But my goodness, is he, is he one of the most polarizing draft prospects of the last few years? Yeah, did they've been uh, really picking on him because he's rich. Well, did you see? Did you? Well, it's not just that; it's his attitude. Like honestly, like I he did an ESPN interview, and he just like he's he's obnoxious. He's a, he's an obnoxious person. I would want him as my pro quarterback. I mean, I was re- watching his uh, reading his sorry watching reading his interview on ESPN, and he just he's he's obnoxious. He's an obnoxious. He he's an obnoxious millennialist. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's that generation. Is I mean, he is a millennial technically, so. You're going to have to expect these type of attitudes, these personalities. Um, I have been hearing a lot of people have been saying it on ESPN and NFL that Barkley, you know, Cleveland might get Barkley. Yeah, but then he was also wearing that Giants hoodie. So that set <laughs> off some rumors. Are you talking about Barkley going as the fourth pick or as the first pick? I've heard either or. I said go with first pick. That's my opinion. Get it out of the way. You'll get a good quarterback uh, by the fourth pick. You think well, that's not a that's not a smart outlook. Okay, so you you have the, probably the best draft four quarterbacks in the last decade or so. Yeah, and you're going to go with the mentality of Cleveland, a porous organization. Do they need a quarterback? Heck yeah. That's what, I mean. Quarterback. You don't for the most part. If you look at Super Bowl winning teams over the last. I don't know, 50 years. Um, for the most part, you'll have a team here and there that didn't have a great quarterback, relied on great defenses like the Baltimore Ravens back in the day. But for the most part, it's a quarterback-driven league. And you hit the quarterback position and you you hit as a franchise. You're going to pass to draft a running back? I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Cleveland's going to take a quarterback. I mean... Cleveland's going to take a quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, probably fourth, but 
Hey, Whoever, I mean, like I'm those five, a, I mean, pretty much those top five teams, they got to choose, I mean, choose a quarterback. They got to. I mean, there's just no way to pass it up. If you're the Giants, have a stomach and, and just draft, choose the quarterback. Yeah, and the next several drafts are, are not, not predicting well at quarterback position. They're yeah. just not, the, the quarterbacks currently in college are not, are not, um, predicted to be as high, high draft picks. They're just not as, as, as do not have as much potential. So you have to go quarterback this draft, and when you have the fir- first pick, you don't have a quarterback. You need a quarterback. They have to draft a quarterback, and I, they're going to draft Sam Darnold. I, I would, like I said, I'm not a betting person, but I'd be willing to wager that Sam Darnold is the first pick of the draft by the Cleveland Browns. And if he isn't, I'd be shocked out of my mind. Literally shocked. Do you think Belichick has the guts to let go of Gronk? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, he's been a great player, but Belichick does what he does. Um, it, yeah, he could. He's not emotionally I've, I've attached heard. to players, uh, apparently. He's, he's definitely emotionally attached to winning. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> will allow him to continue – his extended success is what he'll do, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I that's 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 a tough one to. Should the yeah, Patriots get a quarterback for the draft? Should the Patriots? Yeah. What did you? I, I didn't hear. You, you uh, should the Patriots there. get a, a, a like a quarterback for, um, in this draft? I mean, to, Father Time d- does seem like he'll eventually catch up to Tom Brady. But the thing is, is where the Patriots pick. And is there a quarterback that they would be willing to draft that they could actually see in, in the future taking over for, for Tom Brady? I will go for I a quarterback. I could possibly see – go ahead. What are you saying? I would definitely go quarterback uh, if I were the Patriots. But obviously, you know, if – I mean, they're currently – oh, gosh, they're low in the draft. Who would the Patriots – if you were the Patriots, who would you draft a quarterback? Yeah, I mean, it just depends what's left. If it's like not uh, like a significant person um, on the list left, well, the 20, but they have the they have the twenty third pick in the first round and the thirty first pick. Yeah, that's so pretty low. So, which quarterback in the draft would you take? I don't know. Like all the good ones are out. I mean, I guess the guy from Wyoming. I've been hearing he's pretty good. But is he left? I mean, will he be around the twenty third pick? I doubt it. So, will Josh Allen be around the twenty third pick? No, no I don't think so. He will not be around. No. The 23rd pick. He's okay, so you have Cleveland Browns picking first. Cleveland Browns going to pick first. I think they take Sam Donald. The second pick of the draft right now uh, is the Giants. Yeah, but are they going to trade out? Are they going to sit with Eli Manning, or are they going to draft quarterback? Then you got the Jets sitting at third. They're for sure going to take a quarterback. If it's not Josh Rosen, it'll be Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield. Fourth pick, Cleveland drafts again. Are they going to trade out? Or are they just going to sit and are they going to take like Saquon Barkley? And then you have the fifth pick being right now Denver. They could take a quarterback. Um, then you got uh, – Right now, 11 to 12 pick. You have the Dolphins, who are going to probably take a quarterback. Yeah. You have the Bills with a higher probability to take a quarterback. You've, so I'm right now saying you got Darnold off the board at one. Who knows the Giants? They're, I don't know right now what they're going to do. I would you do it. I would do it. I will hold my breath and pick a quarterback. Well, then they take Josh Allen. Yeah. Third pick, you got the Jets picking Josh Rosen. Rosen. Fourth, pick, fourth pick, in the fifth pick, you have Denver taking Baker Mayfield, and then I think you have Arizona take Mason Rudolph, who uh, could possibly fall if Mason Rudolph is around at the twenty-third pick for the new, for the New England Patriots. Yes, I think they might draft him. He's a very good college quarterback. I mean, he had very good. He had a lot. He had very good production at at Oklahoma State. He, you know, he's good size. He's good athletic ability. 
he's a he, he's a guy who you'd make, seems to have uh, make very limited mm-hmm. mistakes. I think he has strong upside. Um, so I I could see them drafting Mason Rudolph. But if Rudolph is off the board, which how I'm looking at this draft right now, and how I know how the future drafts are predicting at the quarterback position, um, I could see six quarterbacks going in the first round. Yeah, that's I mean. Like but, you were saying, it's a year to capitalize on this. I don't. I. I don't know. I do not see Bill Belichick drafting Lamar Jackson. Yeah. If Lamar Jackson's left on the board, I don't think Bill Belichick drafts him. <laughs> like Bill Belichick says, "We'll do it for the best for the team. <laughs> we'll do what's best for and the I, team." That's what he just said. <laughs> You're going to go from Tom Brady to Lamar Jackson. I, I don't see that. I think if Lamar Jackson goes anywhere, he would go to, like, uh, maybe Arizona um, uh, or someone like that. But uh, I think the jury's really still out on Lamar Jackson in the NFL as a quarterback. Um, well, so NFL draft we'll April, April 26th. NBA playoffs this weekend. Which game are you going to look at, or like which series this weekend you're really going to look at and watch? Which series am I most interested in? in yeah. Oklahoma City versus Utah. Me too. That and Philadelphia, yep. Miami. Yep, Philadelphia, Miami. I, I'm also interested in Boston versus the Bucks. Do you know? Uh, do you yeah. think there will be any upset this weekend? First game. Do I have an upset happening? Yeah. Um, maybe Indiana over Cleveland. I mean, that's another one I'm interested in. Um, this going to be a good series. They say like, Minnesota will offense. because they have a like a like a nice big win jump from Wednesday night against the Nuggets, but we'll see. Oh, the Timberwolves versus uh, Rockets. The, uh, Rockets. Yeah. I don't. Know. I don't know. I don't think they win the game. Actually, I, I don't like the Timberwolves team. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like how they're put together, I just, and I don't like how they play together as a team. Well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that one. <laughs> well, there you go. NBA playoffs begins tomorrow on Saturday, April 14th at 3:30 p.m. Eastern. I'll be two o'clock your time, I guess 2:30. So I'll be I'll be I'll be watching TV all weekend. Soccer, then playoffs, and then oh, the Masters. Quick recap. Masters. Tiger Woods fan. He didn't. He, you know, still showed that he still has a ways to go before he's going to compete. Shooting uh, one under. Uh, sorry, one over. He played better. A couple days. Um, Patrick Reed just had a great. He, you know, he was playing good in all the tournaments up to the Masters. Not surprising that he won it. Jordan Spieth was that freaking back last day. Shot amazing the first day. They had two very subpar days, and then came back and shot an amazing third round, almost won the thing. And uh, Ricky Fowler was a great last day, almost came back and won. But Patrick Reed, definitely deserving of his uh, Masters win. Um, But, you know, as a Tiger Woods enthusiast, I'm looking forward to Tiger coming back on the winner's circle. But he really was never in contention this week. Um, Did not necessarily putt near as well as he had even the previous couple tournaments. He also wasn't very good in his mid-game. His irons were a little bit off. He was leaving putts too far, very difficult putts. But even, you know, he was making some of those putts in a couple earlier tournaments. His driving was a little better. He was a little better off the tee. Definitely saw that he worked on that. And I think that's what enabled him to shoot about even par throughout the tournament. But he still has a ways to go, honestly. But uh, a good victory by Reed and and Spieth, man. He almost – did you see him that last day? I saw him the last day. It was the only day that I watched it. It was a great, great final day. And uh, I, I, I was I was really perplexed because I've never heard of him before. But he was crying, emotional. But I'm glad he won it. He's like He seems like a very, very humble person. Yeah, well, not only that, he's played so well recently. Like in all the tournaments leading up, he was in the top three. 
and it, it, and he continued. He's, he's just playing very well right now. And it's going to be an interesting year for golf because, you know, you got the Tiger Woods hoopla, but then Rory's playing much better. Rory was in second place and was part of the final pairing. So he's back. Spieth's showing he's getting his game back, almost won the Masters. Um, so you have some good players that are playing pretty well and Tiger back. So I think golf's kind of, you know, when let's be honest. When Tiger Woods is gone, it loses – a lot of luster. Like the viewership is way, way down. And then couple that with the guys who are more the household names, who have won more majors like a Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth. When they're playing well to go along with the hoopla of Tiger being back, it makes golf a lot more fun and a lot more viewership. So it's going to be an exciting year. I'm looking forward to the next few majors. I don't think Tiger wins one this year. I just don't. I don't think he gets it. I think he might win a tournament. I don't think he wins a major. Will Patrick you Reed uh, win a, uh, another one? I don't think so. This is his first major win. He's playing very well, but I, I'd be – no, I don't think so. I, you know, the U.S. Open, I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I could see uh, – I could really see Rory taking one. I could see Rory taking the U.S. Open. He's a, he hit so good off the tee. If I had to predict a guy right off the bat to win the U.S. Open, it would be Rory. Remember, it's more of a long ball course. And then the British Open is so hard to predict. That's such a difficult – with the weather out in England, it's so – Scotland or wherever. <laughs> it's in Scotland. Um, it's so difficult to predict. Who knows who wins that? You just never know. And then you got the PGA Championship. Um. I, I think Rory wins one this year. I think he takes another major. He he didn't get the Grand Slam. He has to win the Masters to take the grand, career Grand Slam. And, uh, you know, a guy like, you know, some guys to watch out for would be uh, Ricky Fowler's playing pretty well. Um, Henrik Stenson's been in contention for a lot of tournaments. So keep an eye on him. And then Dustin Johnson is a number one, was number one player in the world. And is always a player to watch out for, especially on any long courses where the, the big drive helps out. So U.S. Open, he's the guy that could make some noise there. He usually does make some noise at the U.S. Open. So it's going to be an interesting year. And Tiger's back. He's going to probably play in all four majors as long as his health um, stays on the course. So as long as he's playing, the viewership will be up. But he will not be winning it, according to Tyler. So, Tyler, how can people reach you? Uh, hit me up. At, look at my Twitter. I think I think you put my Twitter up there before. Yep, um, it's on right now. Uh, TT. It's TT Turner two, not O two. So yeah, TT Turner two. That's been corrected. Tyler, yep. thank you very much for coming on the Sportscast, and uh, don't forget to watch the NBA. We'll be glued to our seats. I kid out, boy. <laughs>